Welcome back to the Mock Miller YouTube channel, Home Brewers. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a closer look at some of the options you've got when it comes to hydrometers. Now a hydrometer is a massively important tool for every single home brewer and professional brewer out there. Let's just cover exactly what a hydrometer is before we take a closer look at some of the options you've got available when it comes to measuring specific gravity of your beer. Now a hydrometer in its simplest form is a tool that measures the density of dissolved sugars within a liquid. Now, when we think about beer, we're really talking about the dissolved sugars that have been extracted from the starches in the grain during the mashing process. Dependent on your recipe, the amount of sugar that you've got dissolved in your wort will vary. Sometimes, maybe if you're brewing a really big, super strong IPA, double IPA, imperial stout, you're gonna have tons and tons of sugars dissolved in the liquid. If you're brewing, say, a table beer, or maybe an ordinary bitter, then the dissolved sugars are gonna be far less. Thankfully, a hydrometer can give us an accurate reading of exactly what the starting point of those sugars are. And also, most importantly, it will tell you exactly how much sugar is left in your beer at the end of fermentation. What you can then do is take the two numbers, use one of the brewing calculators that's available, some of the software or apps that are out there to tell you exactly what the ABV of your finished beer is. Taking measurements during the brewing process is both vital, but also really, really interesting. It's a great way of being able to track what your yeast is doing to the sugars, how quickly it's converting them into alcohol, and how long it's gonna be until you can enjoy your finished beer. So therefore, it's a super important tool for every single brewer out there, and really, you can't ever do without one. Now, we've already got a really useful video on how to use a hydrometer and some of the options are already out there. There's a link to it up here, so do check it out. But actually there's been some changes in the market recently and some new products have come onto the scene, which we wanted to take a little bit of a closer look at to really help you understand what's the difference. Because each of the options, when we look at hydrometers, come with both pros, cons, and different price tags. So there's something to suit everybody. Now let's take a look at our first option of hydrometers, and it's probably the most commonly used and the most recognizable. It's the simple glass hydrometer. Now, this glass hydrometer has been used for years, both in professional brewing and home brewing. It's super simple to use, and the design of it's really simple as well. It's a glass tube that's sealed at both ends, with a scale that's printed normally on paper on the inside. And it's been calibrated using the weights at the bottom to make sure that when it floats in any liquid, that you're gonna get an accurate reading of the dissolved sugars. So what you can do is pop this into a sample of beer or wort, it will sink, and the point to where it sinks, you'll be able to see on the scale as it breaches the top of the sample, that will be the reading that tells you how much dissolved sugar is in there, the specific gravity. Now the pros for this are they're actually super accessible. They come at a various different range of prices and sizes, but generally they're the most affordable as well. Now the downside with them, sometimes, especially on the ones that have got quite a tight scale on them, it can be a little bit tricky to read the exact gravity reading because the numbers are quite close together. The other cons for these is because they're made of glass, they are quite fragile. So if you were to drop this, it's gonna break. There's no two ways about it. So you have to be very careful in the way that you use them. We have some specially designed ones available as well that have larger scales. So actually the gaps between the numbers are wider so you can get a truer reading of actually what the gravity in your beer or wort is. Also, it's worth noting that these have to be put into a sample that is at a specific temperature. They are calibrated to temperatures, and generally speaking, most of the ones that we stock here at the Malt Mill are all calibrated to 20 degrees. So that the sample of liquid that you're putting the hydrometer into needs to be around about that temperature. There are some useful calculators available that can help you work out the adjustment if the temperature is lower, or indeed if it's higher. 
but generally speaking, they're gonna be the most accurate at the calibration temperature that they're set to. One of the other downsides though with these is if you're interested in taking gravity readings throughout the entire fermentation process, you're gonna to need to draw off a sample every time you do that. And the samples that you need to be able to submerge your hydrometer into are gonna be at around about 150 to 200 mils. Now, if you wanna take gravity readings maybe three, four, five times throughout the fermentation process, actually, if we're talking about a 20 litre batch or a 23 litre batch, it's quite a lot of beer that you're gonna be using uh, to take those samples, which leads us on to our next option. Next up is the refractometer. Now, again, most of you will have seen these being used by the professional brewers, home brewers. We use them sometimes in our brew day videos. And the reason that this is such a useful tool when we're talking about gravity readings is because of actually how accurate it can be. Now, the way a refractometer works is you've got a little lens at the end here that you put an incredibly small sample onto of your wort. You close up the lid, you can then look through the eyepiece, hold it up to a light, or in this case, the one that we sell has a built-in LED light. And then the way the light travels through the sample into the lens actually is able to show us what the dissolved sugars in the sample are. Now, the big benefits of a refractometer are, firstly, they're far easier to read once you've got them set up well and you're used to using them. And also, you're able to use far less work for your samples, it literally needs just like a drop on the lens. So you're saving quite a bit there. Now the downside for them is that they're not applicable really for when you're talking about beer or work that has alcohol present. So through the brewing process and at the end of fermentation, you can't actually get accurate readings. Now there are ways that you can calculate it and compensations that you can apply and there are calculators out there, but it's not as straightforward as using some of the other options that are available. That being said, a refractometer really comes into its own on brew day because they're a really good way of being able to take a sample of your work pre-boil, you can take a sample of your work post-boil, you can even take a sample of your work during the boil to see where you are in terms of your gravity because of the evaporation that takes place during the boiling process. I've personally been able to deploy a refractometer when I've not necessarily hit my numbers during the mash and then I've needed to allow for that and allow a bit more boil off, thus pushing the gravity up higher so you can keep track of it. The other really cool thing that I like to do with a refractometer is check throughout the mashing process what the specific gravity of my wort is. And it's really cool because actually if you check it a few times throughout the mash process, you can see the gravity points creeping up and up and up as the enzymes that are present in the grain do their work converting the starches into sugar. Now, generally, they're a little bit more expensive than a glass hydrometer. Uh, and as I said, they're not great for using in samples where you have alcohol present. Nonetheless, though, they're a very, very useful tool when it comes to the brewing process. And if you're somebody that likes to really track those numbers and really go into detail at looking at actually what's happening during your brew day, during the mashing process, during the boil, it's a great way to do it. Now we're on to the third option of hydrometer that we have available in our lineup. And these are relatively new if we compare them to the first two, and it's the digital hydrometer. Now there's loads of different options of these available now on the market. This is the wrapped pill by Kegland, and actually one that we've used a fair bit here at the Malt Miller over the last year or so. And it's been incredibly reliable. Let's just delve into actually the way that these work. So first and foremost, they get put into your fermenter at the beginning of fermentation. And because they're hollow with some technology built inside them, they float and actually they tilt. And the way that they measure the gravity in your beer is the angle that they're sat in the beer changes as fermentation takes place. And that angle that they tilt to actually is what is used by the hydrometer to tell you your gravity reading. Most of them also have a thermometer built into them as well. And then they'll transmit a signal out of your fermenter, either via Bluetooth or via Wi-Fi, so that you can connect it to a smart device or some form of receiver that then allows you to see exactly what's happening inside your fermenter. Now, the beauty of these is that you don't have to take any samples during the fermentation process to be able to see what's going on. And actually most of the software that you can use these with gives you a lovely graph where you can see both the temperature, 
the gravity, and actually you can see those really cool points during fermentation, like when, uh, you know, the first phase of fermentation, when there may be a little bit of a lag, then you can suddenly see it start to drop, then you can see it tail off and take a bit longer. For those of you that really like to dine out on that kind of stuff, a digital hydrometer such as this is an amazing tool. Now it does come with a few caveats and things to know. First of all, they can be slightly less accurate than some of the other options. And the reason for that is because we've got to understand what's happening in our fermentation vessel whilst we're fermenting our beer. Most of you will know that when you're fermenting ales specifically, you'll have that lovely foamy frothy head of yeast called Krausen sat on the top of your fermenting beer. That cap of Krausen can actually sometimes cause the readings on the hydrometer to not be as accurate as you would like. However, that being said, the benefit of these is that you can see when your fermentation has started, you can see when it's stopped, and if you couple it with a manual hydrometer, you'll be then, then be able to make sure that you limit the amount of samples that you're taking out to track fermentation. The other big benefit of these is you're able to get a second temperature reading of what's happening right in the middle of your fermentation. Now, most fermenters, the thermal well or the temperature probe isn't gonna be going all the way into the middle of the fermenter and it will probably be towards the bottom as well. So having this gives you as the brewer the option to have a look at both readings and make a judgment call on whether you want to up the temperature, reduce the temperature, or just play around with temperatures in general during your fermentation. Now we have to remember that it is technology. Things can go wrong, or it might take a little bit of time to help you get set up and understand how it works. And actually we've got a really good video giving you an entire walkthrough on how to set the wrap pill up. I'll put it up here so you can check it out. Now the other things to bear in mind when you're talking about using one of these is you need to have some form of receiver or Wi-Fi network wherever your fermentation space is. So not everybody's got that. So again, you might need to think about the associated implications of being able to set that up as well. They also have a battery inside, which sometimes needs to be replaced and you need to make sure that it's replaced with the same style of battery. Or in the case of the wrap pill, it is a rechargeable battery that does last a very long time, but you do need to make sure that it is charged before you put it into your work because actually having the battery run out halfway th through fermentation can be really frustrating. Now, the last one we wanna just take a look at is the fairly new option on the scene, and it's Easy Dens by Anton Parr. Now this is certainly right at the top end of our options when we talk about hydrometers, both in terms of technology and associated cost. What this offers though is lab quality readings. Now Anton Parr developed technology for labs all around the world, specifically breweries, so that actually all the readings they're using are submissible to HMRC or their local governing bodies. Now the way that the Easy Dens work is in conjunction with your phone or tablet or smart device. They connect via Bluetooth. You then take a small sample, normally about five mil of either unfermented wort, fermenting beer or finished beer, and you put it into the system through one of the gauges on the top. Now there's another gauge that drains out from the system and then inside, and you can see through the window, there's a little glass vial which collects the sample. It then uses light technology, smart stuff that I don't really know a huge amount about to give you a lab quality reading of the specific gravity that you're looking at. Now the big benefits of this that we've seen are first of all, Similar to a refractometer, you don't need a huge sample size to be able to take a reading. So actually, if you want to track fermentation throughout the whole process, it's not going to be destructive to the amount of beer that you're going to end up with at the end. Secondly to that, as I've already mentioned, the, the quality of the reading that you're going to be getting is incredibly high. It's going to be very accurate, and you know that you can trust the reading that you're getting from it. Also, within the app, it's got some really cool ways for you to track batches so that you can log those gravity points throughout the fermentation process when you're taking your samples and also it's incredibly user friendly and fast. Now the downsides to it, it does come with a price tag but if you're somebody that's really into this stuff and looking at how you can get the most accurate readings then actually it's a really good investment. Now the second thing to note on this is that it is lab grade equipment again so you need to handle it with care and be sure not to drop it. Regardless of those two things, it's super easy to clean, really convenient to set up, and as I've already said, if you wanna get the most accurate readings possible, it's a great way to do it. Now those are the four different devices that we have available to us to be able to take gravity readings in our beer. 
But actually, I know that all of you are gonna be really keen to see how do they stack up against each other. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna pit each of them off against each other and see just exactly what comes up with our gravity readings. So we've done our four different hydrometer readings. And just so you know, we've used some finished beer that we know what the gravity was at the beginning and we know what the gravity was at the end. Now to make sure that the readings were accurate, we degassed the finished beer first. And we did that by pouring it from height into two jugs repeatedly until we were confident that all the carbon dioxide had left the beer. Now, if we start with the normal hydrometer, dead easy, we filled the hydrometer trial jar up we put the hydrometer in, we let it settle for a little bit, and then we could see the reading. Now, if we move over to the refractometer, actually, this is where we started to have to do a little bit more work. So we took a very small sample, just a couple of mil in a, in a syringe, put it onto the lens, had a look through, took the reading, and then we had to head over to the internet and use a calculator where we adjusted for the alcohol content. And you can do that by, if you know what the starting gravity of your uh, work was, and you know what the reading is on here, you can then use these calculators to do an adjustment. Over with the pill, it was dead simple. We just filled up to mimic what it would be like inside a fermentation vessel. We put our pill into the, uh, into the sample and we left it to settle for a little while. Over with the Easy Dens from Anton Parr, that was a super simple process. Just five mil in a syringe, pushed through the Easy Dens, hit start measurement in the app, and within a second, we had our reading. Now, all of the readings came out roughly the same. The variation between them was about two points in gravity. Now, if we come back to the glass hydrometer for a moment, actually, I took a temperature reading of the sample, and it was about 15 degrees. Now, we know that they're calibrated to 20 degrees, so again, we had to do a calculation to figure that out. We simply put our numbers, including the temperature, into an online piece of software, and it gave us a reading of 1009, which actually means that the variation between all of them was maybe only one point in gravity. The degrees of separation really start to show when you talk about the sample size and the effort you have to put in as a brewer to find a true reading. Now, with both of the glass hydrometer and the refractometer, we had to do some form of calculation to find out our true reading. It would be a bit different if the temperature of the work we were using was actually at 20 degrees, but it's worth noting that if your work is colder than that, say for example, you're taking it out of a fermenter that's maybe cold crashing at four degrees, you're gonna to have to do that same calculation. Over here, we saw a slightly less accurate result with the wrap pill, but that's to be expected because of the way that they work and the variation of when you're taking the reading, whether the work's wobbling, all that kind of stuff. But as I said, the big joy over here is that what you're not having to do is take loads and loads of samples from your beer throughout the process. And then really the truest and most accurate and also the one that used the least amount of sample is the Easy Dens from Anton Parr. Now, as we've said, all of these are gonna be super beneficial for you as a brewer. It's just really interesting to take a moment and look at what do you get when you start to go both through the prices and the technology that's involved with all of these systems. So I hope that this has given you a bit of insight into how all of these work individually and how they're compared. If you've got any further questions about hydrometers, taking gravity readings, or anything to do with homebrewing, Drop them down in the comments below and we will absolutely get back to you. Now, if you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell for notifications so you can stay up to date with all of the content and the work that goes on here at Malt Miller HQ. And you can also find us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter.